welcome to the series on managing emerging technologies. We are going to cover four topics, and today we're going to talk about the hype curve. Now, let's revise what we learned about the first topic, which is the S curve. And we say that emerging technologies, we have an existing and the new incoming new technologies, such as maybe metaverse and NFTs. The question is, what, how are they being identified and we illustrate using the example of the Walkman, the Discman, and the uh, iPod or MP3 players. And then what we're trying to do is also to introduce you to emerging technologies that's coming onto the market and disruptive technology is something that's going to destroy the current industry paradigm or take over the market share of the existing players. Well, we also talk about, you can actually look at technologies from research companies, consulting houses, and this is an example from McKinsey. But look at what Bill Gates has said. We always overestimate the change that will occur in the next two years. I mean, short term, we always tend to say, ha, ah, there is something that is going to come fast. And then they underestimate the change that will occur in the next 10 years. So it's like something is, is that further in the future, we say, all right, it will take some time to come, but it will be not that important. All right? So this is very important because it helps us to predict how the emerging technology is going to disrupt the industry and formal. So what things is about foresight. Now, what Bill Gates said is really about foresight. You see something near, can you see something far? And the thing that is far has actually bigger impact. Now, so how do you actually work on foresight? It's very simple. We look into darkness. I mean, I'm going to look 10 years or 20 years down the road. I'm going to look into darkness and say, so I need a tool to help me. What kind of tool? Well, if it's a dark night without any moonlight, then how do you see the path forward? And you use a torchlight, right? So you use a torchlight and you shine. And rough now, you have a path forward. What does it mean? Well, it means that the technology is right now, you look at this technology and you project forward. And that's what it means by using the torchlight to, to see 10 years down the road, and then you can do extrapolation. All right, let's take a look at 10 years down the road. What happened? You use a torch light, you use the macro trend of the technology, and you can extrapolate that spotlight 10 years into the future. But the, what happened is what you can see, others can see. You can see the mega trend, so do others. So what advantages do you have? Nothing, right? It's a bit of competition between the same people who see the same thing. However, if you look at the edge, you will start seeing gray areas. Well, it's very normal. A lot of people do not pay attention to the gray areas, that the spotlight will have gray areas and the further down the road until it's complete darkness. All right, that's where we don't pay attention to. Now, so we can actually look at all these bright areas and gray areas and complete darkness and actually try to delineate it into probable areas, plausible areas, and possible areas. But the important thing is, where do you want the self to be? And that's your preferred areas. Now, we can take a look at the picture and how does it look like. So to vision the future, you, let's say it takes a 10 years horizon, you shine the torchlight, and that's probably what will happen. Spotlight, megatrends, that was what everybody can see. Not really any competitive advantage. However, there are all the gray areas, which is plausible and possible, where you might then choose, based on where you want to go, your resources that you command, and your preference, your preferred area. As long as it's within this region and not out of complete darkness, which is not possible, then this is your choice. So what then is the difference? 
Well, everybody is looking at here because everybody is using the same spotlight. But you have tweaked the spotlight, you have identified in other areas, and therefore you are different. The rest is the strategy and the implementation. And that's the way that we can more or less look at the future. Now, so one way we can, we can actually use to predict 10 years down the road is to use what we call the hype curve. And it's developed by Gartner. And in the hype curve, what we see is same. Performance, instead of performance indicator, we have on the vertical axis, performance expectations. On the y x, on the x axis, on the y axis is performance, sorry. So what we see is on the y axis is instead of performance, we see expectations of performance expectation. On the x axis, we still have time. And the hype curve started off with the innovation trigger. New technology comes in, it trigger the uh, people to talk about it, and then it reached a peak of inflated expectation. People expect a lot of it, and therefore, there are a lot of people talking about it. It's like Bitcoin is one instance, virtual reality in another instance, blockchain in another instance, and now NFT. So when the expectations did not meet, right? When the actual performance did not meet the expectations, there will be a drop in oh. expectation, and this is the trough of disillusionment, right? Think about e-commerce. When it first come out, everybody will invest in pet.com, doc.com, as long as you're a dot-com. And then it just goes all the way up and then collapse, and that is where you have the dot-com bus. Okay? And it takes many years before e-commerce come back, and now e-commerce is really a very strong business. So the model works. However, in the earlier days, there are unrealistic expectations, what we call irrational exuberance. And this is how the curve looks like. And therefore, you can divide the curve into five key phases. The innovation trigger, where it started. The peak of inflated expectation, that Alan Greenspan say is irrational exuberance. And when the hype goes off, then it's the trough of dil delusionment where people don't want to talk about it, they want to touch on it, and then they recover to the slope of enlightenment with the when the performance pick up and then a plateau of productivity, which is, well, it reaches performance expectations. And therefore, if you look at this diagram, you can actually look at where are the options and where are the things that will happen. Well, usually what happens is that at at the irrational expectations and driving up the expectations, the product hasn't come into the market, but the innovations are there. It's like 3D printing, okay? And there are a lot of expectations, and people drive the market. Well, it's good for people who are um, doing startups. They can raise a lot of funds, all right? But of course, for investors, you've got to be very, very careful. And then finally, it comes down this way, and go up to the plateau, reaches potential limit before another S comes, comes about. And this is a natural phenomenon, driven a lot more by expectations in the media, especially nowadays when information exchanges so fast. Let's take a look at the blockchain business, right? So the blockchain business in 2019, you can see there are a lot of smart contracts. Well, in earlier in 2019, there are a lot of ICOs, right? So I, by 2019, there are no, no more ICOs. Is that you know, people raise funds by doing you know, uh, initial coin offerings. There are also distributed ledgers and all the stuff. Well, one way to look at the, uh, uh, using the height curve is to look at all these colors that Gartner has put in. And you can see it below, you have zero, less than two, uh, you have this white color less than two years, light blue, two to five years, and blue, five to 10 years, and then more than 10 years. Now, this allow you to see roughly into the future what technologies is emerging through and when it will reach maturity means it will be commonly used. But the rest is not ready to be used. But it also tells you what is coming. And that's the power 
of the Gartner height curve. Now, if you look at 3D printing, and that is 2015, right? You can see that the uh, consumer 3D printing is probably around here. Okay, 2011. It's near. It's people is being hyped out. At 2013, actually, the consumer 3D printing is hype. And at the point in time, a lot of people say, hey, you can buy a printer and you can manufacture anything at home, which is not possible. And therefore, when the 3D printer actually comes out and people are disappointed and the market just dropped, right? So, so the valuation of the companies who are 3D uh, printing companies has just dropped dramatically. And therefore, you can see that in 2015, they actually start dropping. And now we are more or less 3D printing in this region to productivity. All right, so how does the two curves come in, the S curve and the height curve? Well, we all know that the S curve really is an S, right? So it's the green line based on real performance that we can track. And the height curve is driven by expectations. So eventually the curve merge. All right, so where are the fundamentals? The fundamentals are the S curve. And there's a phenomena of irrational ex exuberance in the height. And that constitutes the hype curve. So the question is, you can use this to project five, ten years into the future, and you can analyze, and you then decide what is the best things or the best strategies that you will adopt for these emerging technologies that is selected.